The next big idea of this unit of quadratics is the idea of what we call the zero product property. And all that really means is if we have two numbers and we multiply them together and our product is zero, then what do we know about A and B? Well, we know one of them, A or B, must equal zero. In fact, actually, both of them could be zero. But here, what we know is one or the other must equal zero since zero times anything would be zero. So why does that matter? How does that apply in the, in the case of parabolas or quadratics? It has to do with this. A lot of times we can factor our uh, quadratics. And so for example, over here, let's say I had factored something and I had already gone ahead and I factored it and I wanted to solve for X. And I knew that X plus eight, that quantity times the quantity X minus five equals zero. So in this case here, well, you know, what, what's X? So what I can say is this is basically the same thing as saying A times B, this would be our A, this would be our B equals zero. So what I know is either x plus 8 must equal 0, or I must know that x minus 5 could be 0. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and solve each one. So if x plus 8 is 0, that means if I subtract 8 on both sides, x is negative 8. So that's one answer right there. Let me finish off the 8. Or over here, if I go ahead and add 5 to both sides, x ends up being 5. So this tells us some information about the quadratics that's super important. And what it has to do with, it tells us, actually, if we had the equation y equals x plus 8 times x minus 5, and if we were to do, go ahead and foil this out, it would end up being y equals x squared plus 3x minus 40. If we were to graph this, what it tells us is it tells us that the x-intercepts are in two locations. One of them will be at negative eight comma zero. Also, the other one will be at five comma zero. So you, if you were wondering, you know, why do we need to do this? What's this all have to do with quadratics and parabolas? It has to do with telling us where the x-intercepts are. So let's try this again here. So let's say I've got this equation over here. Two x squared plus three x minus two equals zero. So what we would want to do in this case here is we want to factor it. So this one had already been factored. This one isn't factored. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So up here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and make my box for factoring. I'm going to go ahead and make my diamond problem as well. I'm going to change color on here. So I'm going to write 2x squared. I'm going to write the minus 2. And as all this works from our previous one, we multiply these two together. That's negative 4x squared. Rewrite the x term down the bottom, and then we ask ourselves, what multiplies to be negative 4 and adds up to be positive 3? Well, that would be positive 4 and a negative 1. Slap in the x's here. Go ahead and put these back into the box. doesn't really matter which boxes we choose. So what do these two have in common? Well, they each have a 2 and they have an x. I'm going to write 2x. If that's a 2x, this must be an x. x times negative 1 gives me that. Negative 1 times a positive 2 gives me this. And just to check, 2x times 2 is 4x. So this factors into x plus 2 and then quantity 2x minus 1. And like we were doing before, now we factored it. So we're going to set each one equal to 0. So I'm going to say either x plus 2 is equal to 0 or I'm going to say 2x minus 1 equals 0. So if I subtract two on both sides, boom, boom, I get x equals negative two. Over here, if I were to go ahead and add one, I get two x equals one. And then if I divide by two, I get x equals a half. So once again, why is this important? How is this useful? If I were trying to graph this equation, y equals two x squared plus three x minus two, and I want to know quickly where the x-intercepts are, if I could factor it, instead equal to zero, our x-intercepts are at negative two comma zero. And finally, our other one would be at one half comma zero. So these would be two points I could use instantaneously, just like that, to go ahead and graph it. And the reason why we say equals to zero is because what's true is, if we were to graph this on the x and the y-axis here, any time a point were to go ahead and be an x-intercept, let's say it was right here or here, it doesn't really matter where, it doesn't matter where I have an x-intercept, what's true about all these points along the x-axis is, is y equals zero. So that's why we're saying y is equal to zero over here. And then you just go ahead and factor, and that tells you where your x-intercepts are. So that's the usefulness and how you actually use the zero product property to help us when we deal with uh, quadratics.